Hello everyone. Today we are going to heal anger. So I have had a lot of anger issues in the past and the method that I'm going to show you today is extremely effective in diffusing your anger. So the first part is going to be how to do this, where I'm going to give you some explanation with some examples. And then we are actually going to do the exercise to release your anger. You can do it anytime. You don't have to sit in one place to do it or have your eyes closed while you do it. That is the best part about this exercise. And uh, it is extremely effective and it is deeply healing. It's going to heal many other physical issues also that you are experiencing, experiencing that if you do it regularly. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. So the first part of the anger healing would be doing a simple breathing exercise, a specific way of breathing that will release your pent up emotions and give you some degree of emotional regulation very easily. The second part of this exercise is we are going to do self forgiveness. So whenever we are angry, Usually it happens because something unfair has happened to us or there is a boundary violation or any kind of injustice that you perceive. So when we are angry towards something or somebody, we are technically angry at ourselves. And if this confuses you, allow me to explain. So for example, if you are familiar with the law of attraction, you will know that whatever energy you are vibrating in is the same kind of energy you are going to attract. Now, if you know and understand this to be true, then you will also realize that when you have attracted a circumstance or a person that has tremendously angered you, it means it is that person or that circumstance is a reflection of the energies you already contain within yourself. So for example, if you are unknowingly and unconsciously invalidating yourself, then you will attract people who invalidate you on the outside. So if you are someone who doesn't love themselves, then you are going to attract people who will make you feel unloved. So if you understand this concept that whatever or whichever way you treat yourself is the same thing that's going to manifest in your outside reality, then this exercise will become very easy for you. So the way you treat yourself is how and, and the way it makes you feel about uh, yourself when you treat yourself in a specific way is how other people are going to treat you and make you feel the same emotion. So if you ex experience, say, loneliness because you keep gaslighting yourself, then you are going to attract people who make you feel lonely and who gaslight you. So coming back to the concept of self-forgiveness, it is very simple. When you are angry at someone else, you have to ask in which way you have which part of you you are angry towards. So let me give you an example. Say somebody, one of my clients was complaining about their, him not being able to close some sales because his clients take some time to make a decision. Basically, he's attracting indecisive clients and he said that I understand that because I am also indecisive and I take time to make a decision. So when we did this exercise, we realized that the person was angry towards that aspect of himself which cannot make any decisions fast. So the moment he started forgiving that part of him that is indecisive, his outside reality changed. The anger towards other people changed. Then he stopped feeling angry towards other people, even if they're indecisive, because he has loved and 
accepted the part of him that is indecisive. So in the second part of this exercise, we are going to ask ourselves which part of us are angry or which part of us has created this reality because of which we are angry. How are we responsible for creating that reality? And then we are going to practice forgiveness. Now, during this exercise and in the following exercise, you will encounter resistance. Sometimes you may not feel like forgiving yourself. Sometimes you may not feel like accepting yourself. And that is okay. Then there is a part of you that is not happy with the kind of choices you have made. So instead of forcefully trying to forgive ourselves, if you don't feel like forgiving yourself, then we have to forgive the part that is resisting the forgiveness, not the part that actually needs forgiveness. So I'm going to explain that while we are doing this. So the third step is once you start doing the self-forgiveness correctly, you will notice your anger going down. But it may not fully go down for some of you. So that is when the third part is important. In the third part, we are going to practice self-love. So then we are going to invoke parts of us that need love given what they have gone through in the circumstance. So we are going to find out parts that need love and simply say, I love and accept you. I love and accept you. It's a very simple mantra, very simple way to do it. And you may face resistance there as well. So we will navigate that when that happens. So let's get started with the actual exercise. So let's do the breathing exercise first to release some of our pent up emotions and regulate our emotions. You can do it anytime when you are feeling extreme anger, unbearable anger. This breathing allows you to release pent up emotions from your heart the heart center. This is extremely beneficial for the heart. So we are going to inhale for the count of four and then we are going to exhale through our mouth using the ha sound. Let's begin. Inhale for a count of four. One, two, three, four. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale. Inhale. One, two, three, four, exhale. How do you feel now? You can do it a few more times by pausing this video and notice how you feel in the body, what sensations you feel in the body. Where do you feel the anger is? Is the anger in your throat like a lump sensation or a burning vein in your sensation or do you feel the anger in your solar plexus like a stabbing sensation for every person the sensation of anger will be different than in a different part of the body some may feel it in the head some may feel it in the face some in the throat some in the chest some in the stomach or it can be anywhere so whichever place you feel your anger is Notice what sensations you feel. You can also take note of how much anger you feel so that you can figure out how effective the methods are. So you can write down on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the least, 10 being the maximum, how much anger you feel right now or before you began the exercise. And after you finish, you can again do a uh, check-in, check-in that whether the score has reduced or not and how much. 
ideally if you do this exercise correctly your anger will become zero so now let's move to the second part of self forgiveness so ask yourself why are you angry towards the person the pain or the circumstance pauses with you and think of the answer take as much time as you need and then resume when you have found the answer all right so now that you know the answer ask yourself how are you responsible for creating this situation if you if this question doesn't make sense to you then you can ask yourself why did i create this situation how am i contributing to this or you can ask yourself which part of me am i angry at pause the video pick any one of the question that makes sense to you and see what answer comes up right now that you have an answer i want you to practice the self forgiveness say for example one of my friends were angry at her husband and then asked this question as to which way are you responsible for creating the situation her anger was that i married him why did i marry him so she is angry at the part of herself that married her husband so i asked her to practice self forgiveness to the part of her that she is angry towards the part that married so you can frame the sentence like this i forgive the part of me that dash uh, the dash is the part of you that you are angry towards you can name that part so that it's easier for you to identify that part so for this example that i was speaking of the sentence she was using was i i forgive the part of me that married him i forgive the part of me that married him so she kept saying in the loop and she experienced her anger going down so i want you to frame the sentence first you can do it in writing if you're not able to do it clearly in your head make the sentence shorter the description of the part shorter so that it's easier to say if you need some time pause the video and do it all right now that you have figured out what sentence you are going to use for self forgiveness say i forgive the part of me that is dash whatever your sentence is So if I take this example, I forgive the part of me that married him, and say this repeatedly in a loop. Don't stop. Keep saying it. Keep saying it until you notice that your anger has started going down and reducing. Either it will vanish completely, or it will reach a stage beyond which it is not going to go down. It's going to hit a plateau. meaning it's going to reduce but it's not going away fully and it's not going down any further so notice what happens and do it for now say i forgive the part of me which dash i forgive the part of me which dash whatever you should put in that out i forgive the part of me which is dash so keep doing it until you hit the plateau or the anger is gone completely Pause the video and do it now.
Okay, now that you have done it, I want you to ask again, if the anger is not fully gone, then ask yourself, what else is there to forgive? Which, what is left in me that I'm still angry towards myself? So you can either find out why you are still angry about that person or the circumstance. And then again, ask yourself in which way I'm responsible in creating this. And find the part that you need to forgive and do this affirmation again. I forgive that part of me, which is dash. So do this exercise three, four times until you notice that the anger is not going down any further. You can pause the video anytime and keep doing the self-forgiveness multiple times for different parts. Each part will have its own reason why it created this situation and your reason to be angry with yourself will be different for each part. So, for example, the example I was using, the lady, when she was practicing that, she still had anger. So I asked, what else is remaining? And she was like, I'm still angry at him. And I asked him, asked her, how are you still responsible for creating that situation? He said, I trusted him and he betrayed my trust. So this is the part of her that she was angry towards. So again, she framed the sentence, I forgive the part of me that trusted him. I forgive the part of me that trusted him. I forgive the part of me that trusted him. So each time you try to find out which part of your angry towards, you'll find a different reason. So keep doing it for some time. Pause this video while you do this. Now, if your anger hasn't reduced to zero by now, if you still have some anger left, we are going to do the third part. Now, the third part is about self-love. So we are going to use EFT to find out which parts of us need our love. So, in your palm, on the karate chop point, if you don't know what the karate chop point is, you can Google karate chop point EFT and you will see a lot of images. So the karate chop point is on the side of the hand. You can use any hand. It works just fine. And use four fingers to gently tap on the karate chop point very gently. Tap on the karate chop point and ask which part of me that is involved in this situation needs my love. Or you can also ask which part of me created this situation and tap. Also add, even if I can't find the answer, I unconditionally love and accept myself and wait for the answer to come. Keep tapping until the answer comes. If you need to ask the question again while tapping, do it so. Which part of me is responsible for the situation? Or which part of me needs my love? Even if I can't find the answer, I'm conditionally love and accept myself. So give a pause every time you ask this question so that the answer comes up. If you keep repeatedly asking, you may not have the opportunity to get the answer. So notice how the answer comes up. Does the answer appear as a voice in your head? Or does the answer appear as a vision or a feeling or a sensation? It can appear in any way. So Every person's way of getting the answer is different. Trust that your body is going to give you the answer that you need. 
So whatever answer comes up for the first, trust it. And then say, once you have found the part, give a name to that part. Ask that part, what should I call you? How should I call you? Say, if you got an answer, the part that he's, this is unfair, then you can name the part as a part that he's unfair. Or you can name the part as a part that has been wronged. You can figure out how you want to reduce the description of that part so that you can use the loving affirmations more easily. So the sentence structure to use the loving affirmation for that part is, I love and accept the part dash. So in this example, for example, I love and accept the part that feels it has been wrong. So you can name the part and add the name of the part at the end of the sentence. So I love and accept the dash, which is the name of, and in the dash, fill in the name of the part. So now we are going to say this affirmation multiple times in a loop without stopping. So if I use this example, I love and accept the part that, that has been wronged. I love and accept the part of me that has been wronged. I love and accept the part of me that has been wronged. And while you are saying it in a loop, loop notice how you are feeling in that body, in your body. Wherever you are feeling the anger, does the emotion start dissolving? Does the emotion start changing to something else? Does the emotion disappear from that portion of the body and reappear somewhere else? What happens to that emotion? Or maybe nothing is happening. The You still feel the same way. So notice what is happening. If the emotion is not going away, it is the same. Then either there is a resistance or you haven't identified the part correctly. So a resistance will feel like a hesitation, a silent objection, a change in the breath, or there is a difficult sensation in the body if the moment you start saying that I love and accept so and so. So notice the resistance. And if there is resistance, then stop saying whatever you were saying, or if the emotion is not going down, it's still the same. Stop saying, I love and accept and ask. Do the tapping again and ask. Which other part of me can I love instead? So don't forcefully love yourself if there is resistance or if the emotion is not going down. We are going to simply shift our focus to another part that needs to be loved. So again, tap on the karate chop point and ask, then which other part which is involved in this situation means my love and find out that part. And then frame the sentence, name that part and frame the sentence, I love and accept the name of the part and keep saying it in the loop and notice how the emotions are changing. So you can do this exercise many times because there might be many parts involved in creating the anger. So let's do it right now. Pause this video to find the part that is that needs your love. And here I found the part. Make the name of the part shorter so that it's easier to put in a sentence. Pause the video again to name the part. Now, form the sen sentence structure. I love and accept the part name. You can write it down or you can do it in your mind, whichever way. You can say it silently. You can say it out loudly. It works both the way. It works even if you don't mean it. So now let's start saying it, keep saying it in the loop and notice your emotion. I love and accept this part. I love and accept your part name. I love and accept the part name. I love and accept the part name. Keep saying it and notice the emotions. I'll give you some time.
So if you notice the emotion is reducing, keep saying it until the emotion has completely gone or is replaced by a different emotion or it is it has plateaued, meaning it's not going down beyond a certain point. So if it is gone, then congratulations, your anger is gone. But if it's not gone, then repeat that exercise, find different other parts that is creating this anger and you may find out many, many parts. So keep doing this exercise for each of those parts until you have reached complete neutrality, complete zero. And the best part about reaching the neutral state is you will have newer answers come outside. The problem, the situation that has been causing you pain, you will suddenly find answers to that situation when you pick this neutral point, when you are completely neutral and you feel no more anger. The answer, the solution will come automatically from within. This is the best part about doing this exercise. So I hope you enjoy this meditation. You can do it as many times during the day. You don't need to sit in one place to do it. You can do it while walking, while doing the dishes. You can do it anytime if you understand. Listen to the meditation two, three times so that you'll get a hang of how to do it. And you will experience deep, deep emotional and physical healing. Thank you.